shiny shoe hey guys it's been a while since we've done one of these uh, hi yeah, it's good to be back really happy awesome. birthday monster train happy birthday monster train <laughs> i know two years wow it just seems like it just flew by so we're gonna have a really fun retrospective today and look back on some of our favorite moments at least some of my favorite moments we'll see <laughs> we'll see if you like my teasing um, I do want to let you know, this is not an update stream, just in case some of you uh, were here for looking for news, etc. As you know, we've turned our uh, global focus to mobile, and if you want to read more about that, there is a link in the chat that's coming up here. So, we're here to celebrate. We miss you guys. We haven't talked to you in a while. Let's just focus on our awesome two years, and we'll go over that stuff. Um, and if you miss this stream, obviously you're here, but if people miss it later, you can watch it over and over and over again this weekend because there is a really nice sale from the 21st to the 23rd and the game is 70% off for new players. So don't worry, if you miss a moment, you can watch it again. Okay, Genesis, so... some requests in the chat to turn up your mic. Oh, to turn up my mic. Okay, hey. There we go. Let me know if that's loud enough for you guys. Okay, so for those of you who have never, who've like lived under a rock and never met you guys, can you, can you tell us more about your work on Monster Train, who you are, and your job titles, etc.? cetera? Let you go uh, Sure. Um, Andrew Krasnick, uh, I'm creative director here at Shining Shoe, did a lot of design work on Monster Train. Everyone on the team does a lot of things. We're a very small company, but overall, design guy. All right, and I'm Mark Cook. I'm the CEO of Shiny Shoe. On Monster Train, uh, my main role was as kind of producer and project manager. Uh, but, you know, like Andrew said, we've got only 18 people here in our company, so it's a lot of different stuff that I do. But uh, for Monster Train, that was it. Plus, lots of playing the game and giving design feedback. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun making the game. And a little bit of programming. I think I did a tiny bit of programming on the game, which is always cool to get, get in there still. <laughs> I didn't know programming. You don't want that. <laughs> Multi talented, all of you. Okay, so as we know, this is the two year anniversary and has been a super wild ride. We're going to relive it all with all of you. And I think the first place we might want to start is, you know, art. It's a really big part of Monster Train. And we have some really early stuff by William Smith, lead artist, Loy Batume and a bunch of other people. But we're going to just kind of look at that while you guys talk about it. So if you want to go over. You know, I actually do have a really early build too. We're going to go over some of that. But if you just want to talk about like, hey, here, you know, here's the room and the pyre, like a long time ago, here's what they looked like. Um, let's start with room process and pyre process. Like, obviously it's changed, but do you have any cool insights to share about these two things? I am trying to bring up the pyre process. Yes, it's Make moved. Sure it's our, moved on our the side. Room. Like it was in the middle and then on the left, it's kind of changed space. <laughs> Right. Well, I think I think we even. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. What do we do? Um, right. At one point, you could put units in front of it. At one point, even like you were on the opposite side. Obviously, like we swapped sides, and we had a lot of debate internally. I remember we had to, like the whole game was was operating the opposite direction. Um, I can't forget why we changed that. It was like. It just felt more intuitive to people to have it be swapped when you're on the left. Oh, no, I, I totally remember right. why. Yeah, it, it was uh, completely just about kind of left to right readability, I think, from a, a, a perspective of people who have played a lot of games. Like, they expect their characters to be on the left-hand side. Like, I don't know, even Final Fantasy, going back to the NES era, your party, for a lot of the games, were on the left, right? I think right. so. There I was think, some, like, yeah. unintuitive feel for some people for it to be reversed. Um, so you can see in some of these early shots with the the kind of uh, the pyre had moved around a number of times um, to try to address that. And we had a different visual style in some of these early ones where it was in that skull. That I don't remember why we changed that. Do you? Uh, you just, things change. Okay. Uh, I know <laughs> if we brought it to the middle, you know, sometimes you're just like, oh, this one's different, better, hopefully. 
Um, we wanted to make sure, like, you know, you didn't put units, you know, up there. That was never really in the design. So we wanted to make sure we wanted to put it in the middle. So it was like clear that it was taking up space, and you weren't going to like want to put your guys up there to defend it. You're like, nope, not your space. Um, so that was that was definitely part of that. Okay, let's look at the I map mean, the, too. The updated art definitely looks more like the. It's part of an engine for right. your train, right. right? You know, the yeah. skull art that was earlier uh, looks cool, but it's not really as connected in the way. Right, skulls are always cool. That's a Game design fact. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's switch to the map. So I think most people don't get to see the map this way, where it's like zoomed out and you can kind of see it as its own shape uh, in entirety. But this was pretty neat to look at the different layers of uh, of, of hell, essentially. Um, how did you decide, like, is this more of an art question possibly to go to Eugen later? But um, was there thought on like the design for this and, you know, like, game design progressing all these ways and, and how you kind of chose the pathing. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, what was, what was all of our choices here? So obviously like the, the kind of complexity in space is like we add more choices as you go up. So we like started with a very gray boxed in where we just did it. And it's like, we had to put the icons down, we had to test it out and then add, obviously add the art to it. Um, we had a lot of like discussions in terms of like different themes for the different areas, what they would like tie into. Um, obviously it was like a little more like mocked up in 3d to start with. And then it got a lot more of the other assets to it. Um, but yeah, no, I think the gameplay here didn't change a whole lot over time. It was mostly just, you have visual changes, uh, figuring out, I mean, definitely one of the challenges here that I'm like, you know, I'm not sure, you know, whenever we maybe do another thing like this in the future, like the, the nodes that were on both sides. I think there's still a debate. It's like, is it clear enough that you're going to get both? And we then, then we have like the highlight. When you highlight and decide, it shows you all the rewards you're going to get. That was like pretty decent. But, you know, I think if we were to do this again, there's, we have some ideas on how we, we do it differently. Oh, okay, okay. Future stuff to think about. Yeah, nice. who knows? Okay, so yeah, this... I, what happens. Go ahead, Mark. I can see on the far left, and someone mentioned this in chat, um, there's only one track on the original oh. one. And, I remember we still had choices for what rewards you would get. I don't remember how it worked at the, in that era. Yeah, you were probably choosing left or right, I would guess. Yeah, you, I, yes. I think we had some like UI on screen, and then that would affect what rewards you would get. But you were on the same train track, so it felt unintuitive. We were like, you know, why can't I get these other ones? Right. Because exactly. they're right there, too. It didn't make any sense. So uh, splitting the tracks was just really to try to make it feel more intuitive, uh, which it helped. All right, guys, this is my favorite, I think, of the art stuff to show you. This is a really, really early build, a monster train. S someone, I don't, it was not me, set the three stewishes sound to the background. So we're going <laughs> to we're gonna watch that and uh, enjoy this early build. Oh, man, look at the cutouts. Like... <laughs> that's, the, that's the best okay I'm, pl I'm flipping back to you what did we have to say this this was amazing i love the little cutouts of like the cards and the i think we need to know what, the which yeah. file was it which file it was, was called it? stooges it's called stooges. stooges stooges i don't think that one's in the folder that oh we're it's not at, okay we can look at it on a uh, stream i remember I remember putting the Benny Hill music on something. So if that was the file we saw then. Oh, um, yes, yes, that's the one. That was something I made. So yeah, that was an early build when there were characters weren't animated. Um, and we had a bug where they were kept going in through the same door <laughs> over and over. And uh, uh, yes. the game was uh, yes. far less polished at that time. But you can see how it still uh, <laughs> had the beginnings of what became the final version of Monster Train. Um, yeah, all games go through a crazy amount of iteration and changes, and it's fun keeping that kind of historical reference sometimes and looking back. Um, Genesee, I don't know if you have this, uh, but at some point, I think we shared like a really very bizarre looking version of the game using pixel art assets that were from some asset pack from the original Game Jam version right. of Monster Train. Where... It's, yeah, like there's there's like Steam games that use this, that shipped with this asset pack. It's, it's pretty popular. Oryx, I think they work at Bungie. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they, I don't know if those are, I don't see that in here. Oh man, I don't know. I think we in Discord. If you guys are curious, go look in Discord. Um, and Fly Penguin, yeah, the three floors have been around for a long time. In fact, it used to be even more. Right. You could upgrade, like one and of the draft upgrade. picks, you could get more floors, but then that was, it was, it was OP, frankly. Like it was just like having more, like, as you know, you guys have all played the game. Like we tried it out. You could get more floors. 
And as they moved up floors, it was just like, oh, extra turns. Great. You're going to just probably win if you have 10 floors. So there was a version of the game, too, where every floor had essentially the pyre was on all floors. So right. you could get a... take damage to the pyre from every floor. Right. Yeah. You take damage from every floor. So that was like, oh, if you didn't populate your floors, you were going to take some damage was like our theory. But it turns out we didn't need that. Then we turned it into an eye because we wanted you to only take damage once on those floors. So you like poke the eye and it got it closed for that turn. That was a version. Um, wow. Try things out early on in games, later on in games too. But um, see, you guys didn't know went through all those iterations. Right. right. Yeah. See, There's also cards that could change floors at one point. You could make turn it into an ice floor or a poison floor. That was fun. It was just like uh, it was a little too much. We didn't need it in the end. And then we kind of brought it back with the the new clan, the, the DLC clan, the Wormkin. The Worm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd say the biggest the biggest change we put into the game overall, um, in terms of changing direction on something majorly during development, that I can remember at least was the uh, we had cards that could be upgraded into stronger versions of the same unit, kind of like a Pokemon evolution. Uh, and you, you can tell which ones those are because they visually there's a clear visual mm -hmm. connection between. Um, like the the horned <laughs> warrior and right. the branded warrior, for example. Uh, so in fact, that card, yeah. yeah, the feature we've talked about this on stream in the past, but uh, it was called the branding temple was the name of this place, and you would poke your unit with the brand, which would upgrade them into uh, a different type of unit, which was a cool kind of concept. It felt cool doing it. Like we had the UI completely done. It was like polished. It was a nice transition and so on. Uh, but we felt the game would benefit more from more overall variety of units. And by disconnecting that system, we were able to push in the upgraded units as just base units throughout the game, which felt overall yeah, better. And, we did the, and then we actually, I mean, the, the, the other upgrade system also kind of like, I think wasn't even around at that time. Like the way you upgrade modular cards and stuff, which we really liked, that sort of evolved from different other stuff. Yeah, Excess Golem, you said uh, some of the brand temple thing became the divinity temples. I'd say, yes, there's some similar amount of things kind of for how that works. Um, it's it's not exactly the same, but it's kind of got a similar idea and a kind of similar visual layout to how that was working in the past before we shipped. Nice. Okay, they're interested in this. We'll we'll probably talk more about evolutions of the game as we go on. But speaking of evolutions, I would like to take a little credit for turning Mark, you know, educated man, CEO of a company, obviously has a lot of accolades, but now you know, influencer, influencer. So here's, let's talk numbers a little. We've had 61 streams during the last two years. I think that's a lot. That's a lot of dedication. So thank you guys for being on here so many times. I mean, we've spent a lot of time chatting with the community and, uh, you know, all of that. So I think that shows the attitude of community thoughts and feedback are important to the team. So we love Absolutely. you guys. Thank you. And uh, yeah, you're, you're back. It's probably, how long has it been since your last stream, Mark? It's been like a while. How do you feel about being back now today? Even though you're sick, dedicated. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling mostly better now, but uh, thank you. I did have a cold this week. It feels good to be back. We're in our new uh, streaming room at our office, which oh, is cool. Oh, fancy. Check it out. We've got some Monster Train posters back there that just went up yesterday, just in time for this stream. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we've been trying to, you know, make it a little bit nicer and uh, for future streams that we will be doing. But uh, yeah, it's it's good to be back in the saddle. I always have fun doing these. Good. All right, well, I have a a video of Andrew and Mark. I think this is your very first stream that we ever did oh. together. Okay. So, it's been so long. here we go. I'm Look Mark at yourselves. Kelly. I'm the founder of uh, Shiny Shoe, uh, and this is Andrew Krausnick, our creative director pressure. and the design lead on a new game we're making called Monster Train that we're gonna show off today. There you go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> first time. Oh, look at those little... Things. I don't know if we're looking at the same thing. Google Drive's taking its sweet time to oh, get to things it's for us. Mark first time. Okay. Yes, I'm having them watch this with you guys because they can't really <laughs> see right. the stream. Oh, we were, we saw the spoiler. Yeah. Andrew, I, I watched this earlier. Andrew does look different. I think it's the hair primarily. I've That's gone, like... you know, <laughs> go goblin mode, as the kids say these days. Goblin mode? I yeah. haven't heard that. Oh, yeah. It's all over the internet. The uh, 
A goblin mode. Yeah. Okay, okay, good to know. So, I mean, you guys yeah. sometimes show the spotlight. Mode. Sometimes Andrew just, like, disappears. He's got, you know, important design things to do, so he doesn't always do this. But, you know, uh, here's one of my favorite runs with you guys together, uh, which we turned into social media. So- sorry for the slight mocking, but I, I think it's amazing. Wow. Um, here we go. That's what we're here it's for. It's not looking good. Mind. I think this is going to be it. Yeah. Please draw battering ram. Yeah, I want to see this battering ram. Please yeah, draw maybe. battering ram. Please He's draw battering chair. ram. 2020 lasted five years. <laughs> yes! First, let's reinforce. Of course. No! Oh, our armor's yes. are <laughs> No! Hello. <laughs> Do us green. There you go. We had we had a little incident with battering ram. Remember Adam? Do you remember that? You were so the excited. sound effects. I I would seen this with the sound effects. The cheering <laughs> children. We need to add that straight to the game. I rem- <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was funny. That was shameful, shameful play on my part. But uh, yeah. I'm glad we got some good social media usage out of yes, it. Yes, yes. <laughs> you you have given us fodder, many many social media fodder uh, options throughout the years. <clears throat> But this is still my favorite, and I think your your favorite too, Mark. We're gonna we're gonna just do it this 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 last time probably. Here we train. go. Let's go. I think I know which one it is. Oh, it is. It's so your favorite. I'll play it for Andrew. This one gets me to get into it. <laughs> Whenever they get devoured, they should just shoot. The dancing is the best piece. <laughs> I really went all in on the production value on this. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> I wish this could have been in the soundtrack. Man, <laughs> you know? nice. Credits music. <clears throat> there you go. We just got to get Marvel to... <laughs> to to allow. Fund us, yeah. I know. Okay, so so hey, throughout the years, the... Mark has, has come up with some fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, see, there's the dance. Some fun stuff. And we actually have some words that were basically like from this game. I mean, I think that we brought Yeet back to the board. I'd like to say that that wasn't as used as often until, uh, widely used as often until this game. I mean, Yeet with the imps, I feel like that is, is, is spread. You know, it's very isolated to like our certain zones, but now it's global. I feel like you've globalized that word. And also this... No, you don't think so? Andrew's like, I hear it yeah. a lot. I hear it. It's just, you know, the end. But I think, you know, nerds maybe. It's our, our nerdy community. It's good. Okay. And this we word also, like, for a while was a thing with Mark. Mark had a, a love yes. for the word pog champ. So here's another, like, social media pog video that we've enjoyed. Mm. We've got, what, one in the deck? Well, someone in chat That's was started using it, and I just thought it sounded hilarious in the context that like they that. used it in so riffed up. on it pog up some stuff here <laughs> I like that. I use that adjectives two seconds later should we pog up the steward or sh- it's probably smarter than pogging up the steward <laughs> if we have enough gold still to pog up let's pog up though all right we're pogging it boom pog that steward let's see if pogging up costs us or not we definitely we got to play pog champ right here let's pog him up right there boom look at that steward we got the pog champ up here. He's gonna clean it up. Uh, we could razor sharp pog champ. I love that pog champ, but yeah, you know. You bleeped out, huh? Thank you, pog champ. He took out up there. He took out one of Seraph's summons summoned enemies. We pogged it up. It worked out in the end. There you go. So so pog was a thing. Yes. <laughs> For a little while. It was. All right. We've grown I gotta start using it. that again. I've stopped. <laughs> oh no! What gotta bring it back. Did? You know, Jordan says, I, "Someone help! He's pogged out of his pog." Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm already kind of out of touch wording-wise. Clearly, I don't know what goblin mode means. Exactly. Now I do. So, uh, a, you know, I I, I do remember with Yeet. Like Mark's like, "What is Yeet?" We had, we had a whole discussion in the office. Like, how do we codify what this means? You don't want to, you know, use it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a Philly. I mean, around Philly, we use that word normally, you know. But it's I feel like it's right. isolated pockets. I don't know. Perhaps. Perhaps right. not. Right. But that's I gotta get my kids to be a little bit older. Once they are, then I'll know all the slang. We can, They're we still can too young you, right now right. to to know themselves. <laughs> that's how I'll stay in touch. <clears throat> I see. Yes, yes. TikTok uh, educates us all. So we've just seen a bunch of things here, but what are some of your favorite streaming memories? Or do you have any like early stuff you want to share? It's it, your turn to talk. 
Well, I guess for me, it, one of my favorite memories was just the excitement uh, in the community around the launch of the game. Like we had no idea what to expect with regards to the popularity of Monster Train when we were launching it. You know, we of course thought we had made a good game, but it's hard to know for sure uh, how how well it's going to do, how many people are going to be interested, and so on. So of course it felt like amazing when uh, there were a lot of people who were really interested in the game and um, that was the kickoff of my streaming career really. Like we had some of those early streams but we were not streaming consistently at that point. Uh, so it started in that time, which is like also when we were all locked down um, from COVID-19 protocol stuff. So streaming from my house, it was a thing to do, I guess, to stay connected to the community when uh, I wasn't really seeing very many people in my personal life outside of my immediate family. So um, I thought it was uh, it was a really fun kind of experience to get to do that. And um, yeah, really rewarding. And some of the you know future kind of funny moments, like things like pogging it up, like there were certain streams that were memorable just for the absurdity of some of the things that happened in them. And uh, I don't want to spoil all of them, Genesee, because I know you have a few other moments lined up. Uh, but yeah, I'd say that the kind of launch of the game was really exciting and really fun to be a part of talking to people who, you know, were really interested in the game and it was new and there was just a lot of chatter going on at that time. How about you, Andrew? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I was like the, the fun part of making games. One of them is when people are better than you at the game you made. So that you know, for a strange. while you're playing internally and you're just like, yeah, I know everything about this game. I know how to win. I can, you know, just perfect information. And then people start playing and you're like, actually, no. There are people that they're just going to be better than I am at this, and I'll have to accept that. And it's actually, no, it's really, it's really nice. It's good. I mean, I kind of stay at Covenant One and just like hang out there, do daily challenges and stuff. Um, and there's people who are like, you know, chain running at the very high end, and it's just shy. When I was asking for people's favorite memories, uh, they were basically posting like the hours played of Monster Trains and it was unreal. It was like 900 hours played, you know, like ridiculously high numbers of just people that have been playing forever. You you know, at that point, you, you hope that you're an expert or, you know, you, you, you're right. really obviously into this. So that was just really gratifying to see like the number of hours people have put in, you know, of their of Yeah, their and I never divide that by like 24 or anything to figure out number of days. <laughs> Oh, I used to do that when I was like, playing EverQuest, nah. and I was like, oh. Right, no, I'm like, oh, that many, huh? Yep, just abstract big numbers are great. Just leave it there. Oh, <laughs> Ask Minko is saying, my favorite memory is when my friend jumped on Discord and streamed for literally 20 seconds, and I went and bought the game because I was so amped to play. The monsters got one off the floor, it's all it took. <laughs> nice, nice. I like it. I feel like Andrew's, all of Andrew's, like, memories probably involve the F8 feature, which was built into the game for you guys to report um, your feedback, but also a lot of bugs, really. It was a wonderful, like, idea. Oh, that's great. No, um, please. Snapshotting all that. And then, you know, we, we actually would put them on stream sometimes if they were exceptional uh, and just read them out. But do you have any, like, game reports that kind of stick out to you from F8 or maybe, you know, stuff I'm that you certain... can recall of the oh. thousands that you probably saw at the beginning when people were getting right. feedback? Well, we got a lot of like feedback that was constructive, useful, you know, but not funny or memorable necessarily. Like, hey, this would be better if this worked this way, or I think this is unbalanced, here's why, uh, things along those lines. Um, the ones that I remember, you know, because they were funny or crazy were like people writing in poems yes. about <laughs> something in the feedback, you know, or you know, when uh, people are getting creative really... or raging, sometimes when people are raging in the feedback. We read literally all of them for what it's worth. I mean, not right now. Um, but you know, before we were working on it, like all of them, I think it still works. Huh? Does it still work? It still works. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Works. It does send something. Maybe we'll read it. Maybe we'll read it. Right <laughs> okay. Steve reads all. Of them send still. us a message. I'm certain Steve reads them yes. all still. So shiny Steve, we we'll um, love your iambic pentameter. Please share that. Yes. And... Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I mean, I think there's a variety of interesting things that came through on that, but some of the funnier ones were the ones that were like more out there, like not as straightforward or sometimes we can't like tell what they're even asking about or talking about or just like it seems like some kind of gibberish anyway yeah it's interesting <laughs> shadow mar marks shadow marks uh mar X. um mad yeah bought it when mad when northern lion kept, kept misplaying we love northern lion youtuber and i know it's like uh his community is like a, a love-hate relationship like he gets a little salty when people like Tell him what he's wrong, but that also like encourages people to play games like ours. 
So we appreciate that he spent so much time with Monster Train. And I know folks, you know, in our in our just in our chat here and probably played the game because of that. But that was also an exciting launch moment was like having someone like I'd watched him, I think, finding Isaac videos or something like a while ago. And so I knew about him and I'm like, all right, playing this game and a lot of people are jumping in. So that was super, super exciting for us. Yeah. Well Shadow Marks does the Pirate Tales, you know. So obviously was so inspired oh, yeah. that he yeah. he she makes a comment or a, a comic about it. So there's they were like monthly, I think, very frequently. Yeah, yeah. Nicely. They're we, funny. They're we, like they're they, they're cool. They should, yeah, they should our, our Slack. They're on our Slack. We post those yeah. every time they come out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Love Pirate Tales. Thank you for that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, obviously, you, you know, exciting the launch, but then we had the test trains. We had six of them, actually, and some of that uh, was a little bit before Wild Mutations, which was in July of 2020, so long ago. And this this was a great update because there was the, the 35 new mutators, obviously the most popular of which was Googly Eyes. Like, we're going to show Googly Eyes, and then, Andrew, I got to ask, like, if you knew that this was going to be... Let's Here's see. Googly Eyes. Let's watch it first. Some new mutators. All right, first one. Chat We've reaction got to googly, googly eyes. eyes. <laughs> All units will have googly eyes in battle. This has no gameplay impact whatsoever, but I love it. Okay, so we've got some guys here. They've got some googly eyes. With him bouncing around in his little animation, I love those eyes. They look ridiculous. There you go. I love Andrew's like no gameplay impact whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, googly eyes are good. Googly yeah, eyes. no, we had to, I mean, we made the setting right. We had we had to make it not a mutator. <laughs> they were too good. They were too powerful. Were you just like I spent all this time designing all these amazing things in the game? And googly oh, eyes? I, you know, I'm, a, I'm these days, you know, probably like a decade ago, early on in my design career, I was like that. But now I'm like, I'm a googly, googly eyes guy, especially <laughs> around here. Sometimes Mark's like, you got to stop talking about googly eye stuff all the time. You got to make oh. crunchy mechanics. Okay. Which we do. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I love that stuff. Um, yeah, I've forgotten the history that we put that in as a mutator initially and then I don't remember if it was before or after we even launched Wild Mutations, got feedback that people want to use it without consuming a mutator <laughs> Mar slot. who's in chat right now, implemented it, and I think implemented the change, so may remember if we did that before launch or not, but yep. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so one of the things I've asked for also in Discord is, you know, we still have community challenges. You cannot name them yourself, but it would be really neat if you guys decided to create some birthday challenge creations and wanted to put them in there. So please do visit the community challenges. There is a link on how to do that in the announcements. It's a walkthrough video in case you've never done it before. And it's really fun. So you should you should make some birthday challenges for people to do. So you go. Unlockable card frames, also very popular. Some nice art in there. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun one. Okay. So these are all the stations. We're calling them stations that you visited on the monster train. Um, and f four months later, we already had our first expansion, Friends and Foes. So not not very quick turnaround there. Good job. Amazing. So we're going to look at Friends and Foes, a picture of it, and you can talk about like some of the stuff in it if you care to share. Cool. Okay. We are loading it up now so google drive's taking its sweet yeah, it's time on picture. every single it's thing a, it's just a key it's art just a picture all it's right just a picture yeah well i mean we knew that we wanted to support the game <clears throat> and uh we're you know lucky and elated that it had done so well um, that we were able to support it for a, a good deal of time with new additional content and so um you know we had a number of ideas that had been dropped or cut during development simply to be able to finish the game on time. So we were really excited to try to think about ways to expand the replayability, which was one of the primary focuses of the Friends and Foes update. I'm sure you can speak more to the design decisions I mean, than me. Sure, that sounds right. Uh, like we pinpointed areas like where, yep, just high impact, you know, like you saw the same kind of like core bosses, we want to swap those. You were always picking kind of, kind of your same core champions, plus it's fun to have different champions. Um, it's definitely always a challenge to do, to do that second round. Um, you always go a little more complex because you've gotten sort of like the core ideas, you know, you've exercised them, you figured out what those basics are. 
And then this is a chance to make something more complicated, which can be interesting for your players who've been around for a bit. Um, but also it can be a design challenge because you're like, well, I used all the ideas that quickly came to my mind and that were really working out. We refined it. And now we have to like grow that design space again. So um, both fun and challenging. Yeah. People are very excited about these exile champions. So Shardtail Queen, very popular. Weldeton, uh, Soulguard, the Martyr, Primordium, also very popular. <laughs> Little Fade and Echo Right. So uh, yeah, also Talos. I, I think Jordan is saying in chat like the Talos is, uh, theme is like a favorite for sure is when it comes to music. Yeah, yeah. No, jo Jordan Chen, uh, music who's in chat, was our composer for everything, as you guys probably know. But he'll be in just later. Call them out. Yes. Yeah, it was cool to put in some new music in in an update like this too. So yeah, it was. Very content rich update for sure. And I feel Andrew, Seraph the patient aspect is probably one of the most controversial <laughs> of, of things in the game. Right. <laughs> do, oh God. do you yeah, care if while. I poke this? Uh, or, would you care to talk I, about Seraph the patient? Explain yourself, yeah, Andrew. It's been a while and maybe, you know, maybe I've just like suppressed all those memories from this. <laughs> like, balance on Seraph was always a super huge challenge. Just like, same thing. Like you were trying, we were trying to find high like impact but not too much impact and so what are these things that feel like just right and you kind of can never get it totally just right um but we collect a lot of data we collect a lot of data from gameplay metrics and from f8s and all this stuff so we just generally try to look at it it's like um if something's annoying we actually generally try to make it a little bit easier to win against so there's a trade-off there if something is less annoying we can make it a little more challenging numerically um, so as I recall, we just definitely kind of tuned it and, you know, variety is good. So we sometimes accept things. We generally try very hard to avoid anti-fun. So anything that's just too awful to play against, even if it's balanced. Um, but sometimes if you need a little variety, we do leave something around. So we took a lot of feedback on all the Seraph variants though. And yep. I think generally, hopefully people agree, kind of got, we got good points. Yeah, we would get, uh, I remember something that we would talk about is like, if the amount of complaints about each variant became even, then we knew we were good. Like, <laughs> yes. this one's unfair. No, this one's unfair. No, this one's unfair. Um, <laughs> but true. Balance. I, I do remember a meme <clears throat> that somebody in the community made uh, when this update went out for this Serif variant. Uh, it's a meme template where there's a guy in the driver's seat of his car, and he's squinting in the first frame. He's got four frames. And then there's the thing, which in this case is Serif. And then he puts his car in reverse and then turns around and starts driving away. I That's thought that was funny. funny. That was like their reaction at the start of a run when they see who. Right. So, <laughs> I tell you, I guess, so you can just reroll if you're the restart. Kind of player. Yes, the restart yeah, battle you button. That, that wind chain or anything. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so only a month passes, and then we have Herzl's workshop, which has a lot of things. So we're going to kind of break that down That's individually, but we're going to look at the the art for um, Herzl because I I think it's a beautiful key art, honestly. Okay. It's a little bit of a, a change. I love the central train steward. Also, <laughs> also a thing that has been yeeted from so many decks, the train steward, um, but has prominence here. By design. <laughs> yeah. Yes, by design. Designed to die, the train yeah, steward. That's a good one. Like yeah. That. Yeah. I like the art for that, though. Uh, so I mean, gonna... based on that previous thing we saw, it's designed to be pogged up, right? <laughs> yes. Come on, it is. Maybe, you know, to win the giant uh, pog there were, there train was, steward. Yeah, there are a few options that would. Yeah. I feel like you did, Mark. Didn't you win with the Pog Train Story? Yes. As you say. You did. Okay, so we're going to talk about modding, um, first of all, because mod support is part of this. And we have a very passionate uh, modder set in our community, very talented, too. Um, so did you expect this to, to like be a big thing? I know that they'd been requesting it for a while. Um, and we're going to talk about some of them, but do you have a favorite? Like, Have you used some of these, and what are your favorite mods for Monster Train? That's on the spot. It's been a while for me. I know. I mean, I played like the, the whole clan swap was a lot of fun, you know, it's, and it's always as a designer, always fascinating to see someone else kind of playing in your sandbox in a different way. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was, that was probably my favorite. That's easy though. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I wish we had the time to make the tools even more accessible. Uh, my main focus on the kind of modding support in general was on the kind of technical side and working with the programming team to try to figure out how we can do it in a way that we had uh, bandwidth for as a team. Um, and I thought it was a cool addition to the game. I thought it was maybe too, you know, 
programmer centric. I wish that we had like easier to use tools to get content in there, but still we have talented members of our community who were able to build stuff that was interesting and different. Um, I was always interested also in the mods that rebalance the game uh, just to see what kind of decisions uh, were put out there by other people who are looking at our title uh, critically from a design angle to see what they think is you know, unbalanced in a variety of different ways. It's always uh, kind of another interesting input. Um, and it's kind of somebody putting their money where their mouth is, so to speak, to not just say that, but to actually go in there and really try to change it. Um, it's always fascinating, I think, to look at. We even had a question just this week. Um, somebody was asking about, you know, if, if they had any help with modding, etc. And actually, you know, we did have, and let me turn this off and turn this one, the Ancient Savant I'm going to show here, which was a creature included in the Arcadian clan that Chronometrics created. Um, and they were kind enough to come on and do like a little stream with us, kind of walking through uh, how modding works and doing some of the actual modding on stream for people. Uh, so there's a, a link in the chat for YouTube um, right now, if you would like to learn more about modding, Chronometrics can kind of walk you through. And this is this is the ancient savant that or, that is here from the clan Ar Arcadian. So check that out. Very cool. Um, another thing we did with modding is, Mark, you, do you remember a long time ago you played the Binding of Isaac? It was modded with Little Fade. And is it uh, always yeah, Dingle? Yeah, Dingle I'm always the boss that one. I have you playing here so they can watch you play. And I'm dead. <laughs> That was cool. That was like an alternative direction. It wasn't something modded into our game. It our was burnout in modded out of our game. Our yeah. stuff modded into another game, which it's really cool to see. You know, it's gonna now I'm it's gonna be embarrassing to watch this. My my terrible game. play. Wow. Right, I'm <laughs> with the candle. I'm scared of the death on. Oh, that's very cool. And that candle is good. Uh, I didn't watch the stream. Yeah, I just really wish I knew how to play this game better, so I didn't look too, uh, you know, embarrassingly bad. No. So I, but I love know, uh, kind of just design ideas that go into trying to adapt something from one game into another. Within this it's awesome. Oh, you start with one health. Do you start with one health in this game? People in the Discord are joking that you will announce the promised uh, Monster Train dating sim because people are looking and talking about you. Right. No, that's Monster uh, Train dating. We always talked about that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into the thirst trap of. There was actually a ranking, though. I think of like champions and characters in Monster Train rated by thickness. I know that there was like a whole chart of this somewhere. <laughs> well, at. I'd be interested to see that. Yeah, we don't have that on our <laughs> metrics. You, you know, we need. We need, <laughs> you, need feedback. To, you need to. There you go. Okay, so aside from modding, we also had the requisite Halloween decoration. So the bone shaker got a little, a little festive for Halloween. Let's uh, let's look at this. The the intro screen, uh, here you can just see the bats, which I thought was like it was a really nice like bone shaker scenario. I think actually, I have one in here that. The, there was a bug for a brief period that turned the loading screen into like I thought it was it looks like fireworks you can see that there it's just called a bug mm -hmm. um, that was one of my favorites I kind of wish we kept that I, I have that gif I just use like every once in a while because I think it's like got lightning and like some some kind of fireworks I, I thought that was amazing yeah I don't, th I don't think we have that I, that was the in progress last divinity main menu is mm -hmm. that, that what you're mm -hmm. talking about you can see it on stream I'm just gonna leave it go for a little bit but yeah, that was yeah. actually intentional at the time, I believe. I don't think that was a bug, considered a bug. Oh, man. Uh, no, I, I think we were just going to go hard for that. And then we were like, nope. too hard. <laughs> take it down. Take, take it down a notch. Uh, we don't we have it in our file right now. I can't watch, so I can't verify. But I think, uh, yeah, I think we tried it out. I think we did, you know? Got you. Okay. Um, well, yeah. after all that, five months later, there's another big milestone for Monster Train. The first ever paid content for the DLC called The Last Divinity. New clan, boss, mechanics. Um, so this was this was pretty intense. It felt like launching like a second Monster Train launch. Like, do you remember? Do you remember the day we did with The Last Divinity? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it uh, it was 
tough to come up with a new clan. This is kind of Andrew was touching on a bit earlier. Once you know you feel like you've tapped all the ideas that seem obvious, and when you want to add a big new piece of content, um, we have to go deeper into kind of more complex ideas. Uh, it can be really interesting to explore that type of design space, but also challenging. So uh, with the Wormkin, there were you know a brand new mechanic with candy, as it's referred to, <laughs> right. it was referred to in right. the community. Yeah. It's easy to remember. We, I think we changed the names on those like Gushers. five times internally. So Really? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you just, naming is absolutely the hardest part of design. Let me tell you that. Um, you just can't be like, if, what are they? Candy. They're candy now. Um, <laughs> they love candy. Um, yeah. Where did the inspiration for The Last Divinity boss come from, Andrew? Oh, ooh, oh, that's a really good question. I mean, like, we like the stained glass idea. Like, obviously, um, we did help, you know, we're, we got this faux heaven and hell thing going on, or, you know, it is. But we're like, well, we got rules. No Jesus. Can't be the last boss. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like, how do we keep it abstract, old school, the horrors of, you know, weird, ancient God things. And so it was, it was uh, stained glass, big stained glass, and you all have to go bigger. Uh, <laughs> Expansions, you gotta go bigger. So we're like, you know, the entire size of the train. Yeah. And then of course, you know, our job here on design is to create problems for other departments. So we're just like, you know, it'd be really cool, the entire size of the train boss. And everyone else is like, yeah, but how do you share damage and how do we do the art? And we're like, you know, that's no longer our problem. We just came up with a really cool idea. You guys can solve it. And they always do. Well, you know, Andrew, I cannot tell you how many how many screenshots Good Shepherd had to reject because they were giant shots with crotch of of Last Divinity. <laughs> that was it. That's like, good to know. I don't, you know, <laughs> I, I wow. It was basically problems, yeah, also we don't think about stupid. problems we just cause for other people. We were right, like right. Um, <laughs> That's it. Well, I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's some love in the chat time. for the for the card sharded. Yeah. Sharded. I don't think we shipped, but it was there. We had a card called that for some time. They're asking or, who the hand is. Or did we ship that? I can't even remember at this point. It's been a while. Yeah. Do we know who's who hand? Is? Oh, okay. Someone have a picture. Like a more question. Sorry, it's been a little while. You have to go to the database. Pull up the card. What does it look like? Um. Yeah, it's someone like me. Uh. What else? Oh yeah, I, I was gonna say we did actually like inventing this clan. We we came up with like three different ideas for clans we could do, and we picked this one because it had just like kind of the right mix of things that we were, you know, we saw how we could implement it. We tested it, but we got some other cool ideas around, just you know, just in case. Again, like Jesse said, today we are not announcing anything. I don't want to say we're announcing anything super soon either, but we do have ideas. We like this game a lot. There you go. But obviously, um, people enjoyed the last community because we've got to 500,000 players. So that was a huge milestone. I'm going to get the right. art out for that. Yeah. yeah. We had launched on the uh, the Xbox by that time, I believe, um, in December of 2020, if I remember correctly. And then when the last divinity launched, we also launched on the series, Xbox series enhanced version. Yes. So how do you guys feel knowing there's like half a million people? Probably almost. I mean, that was a while ago, so maybe a lot more at this point. I think right? there's got to be more. I mean, there's no, got to I, 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 I totally know what the number is. That. I don't, if Genesee and I allowed to say it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can say it. Why not? Yeah. Um, it's like 800K or something. Okay. Something like that now. Let's see. We, can, we have got to get those mobiles, the mobile stuff out. Yeah. yeah we got we to gotta cross a million somehow. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, we're going to do it. Very cool. Okay, so after that, we had a first anniversary. Like, all of this happened within the first year. <laughs> it, it was very intense. It was very intense. Um, and we had some special guests. We asked the community to, like, participate. So I don't know if you remember. Um, <laughs> if you remember that we did this, I'm going to show you a couple of my favorites. These are the winners of the... We, we <laughs> designed a Monster Train birthday hat and then asked people to, like, wear it or share it. And they these are the two winners, the dog and cat, uh, who obviously were extremely stylish. And they, they win the birthday hat competition. <laughs> that was on. Here's our birthday card as well for those of you who want to see it. Aww. Yes. That's yeah. the best way to have a cat wear a hat. Otherwise... I can't they don't believe that it. cat allowed it. That's amazing. Well, it's like, you know. It's on top of a table, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I guess that's the only way to do it. 
<laughs> that's true okay guys also we're taking i mean obviously we're reading chat too but if you have questions you can ask them here we're going through all this but please do ask your questions and we'll see if we can kind of fold them into to what we're talking about too um so yeah we're open to that Okay, now going back to our timeline, we these are we had some big stuff happening in August 2021. Um, we arrived on the Nintendo Switch, so now there is a you can take this with you, right? So there's <laughs> this is one of my my favorites too. We wanted to do a a monster train on a train, so people we we wanted to see if anyone would play it on a train. So here we go. This is this is the lovely uh, Amy who was a community manager for a period here and still loves the game dearly so sent us this picture of herself with a switch that matches the train which i think is amazing um just playing playing the switch monster train on the train so what country is this in this is the netherlands yes okay nice. cool. yeah, i was gonna say we don't have cool trains like no, that we here we do not have cool trains just dream of it <laughs> yes no trains like that unfortunately here Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, there were awards, of course, for the game. Do you do you guys follow that? Are you like looking in the news, going like, "Have we been nominated for something?" Or all that. Like, how does that feel? On yeah, the of course. Side? Yeah. I mean, not not anymore, but uh, in twenty twenty, we definitely did. I still uh, watch Twitter. You know, I'm, I'm still looking. Is at a look? That. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can name them here: PC Gamer Best Card Game twenty twenty winner, Dice the 24th annual mm. awards finalist and then the game awards 2020 best strategy game nominee giga awards 2d character design nominee and navigator navigator 2021 awards best strategy game nominee and i have a couple like i think uh here's our here's our our one for accolades um here it's a little, little like trailer so you can watch that um But one of the real reasons people are watching is you, Mark, of course. <laughs> That's, you know, there you go. His career, his backup career, this his whole CEO career. thing doesn't work out. He's gone. I know. Full time streamer. Full time streamer. <laughs> Another reason that people really enjoyed this uh, is. Oh, Chief. we have some questions. All right. We did. Cameo well, time for Chief. Oh, yeah. Let's watch Chief and then yeah. we'll answer questions. Great. Right. Is well, Chief right. around? I guess not. This is the actual office now. So no, Chief I'm doesn't a... get to play. We don't have an office cat yet. You know, we'll see. Yeah. Chief lives at my house, not at our office. So unfortunately, no more yes. Chief cameos unless I stream yes. from home again. Oh, man. Okay. Look how cute Chief You're back. Yeah. Look at the camera. It's over there. Now, what are you going to do about this? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, look at how fluffy this cat is. <laughs> Oh. Let's get him. Yeah. There he is. Okay. Definitely yeah. love to interrupt my streams with incessant <laughs> meowing. Here he is again. It was like a 50-50 chance if he was going to start meowing in the stream each each time I went live. So you just never knew. The party yeah. That's right. just, he'd want to come in here, right? Like, no, I don't think he does. Okay. Question no, from Santorek. Which imp is your favorite? All right. I mean, it's like picking from your children, but which which imp is your favorite? You got a favorite? I have a favorite imp. I like the scholar one. S Scholar's fun. Scholar's a good one. A lot of like good combos, good combo potential. I just I gotta go with the basic one. You know, just a little, a little like, standard, just, standard, just classic. I'm a classic guy. I still like vanilla ice cream. You know, what can I say? It's probably the most iconic like visual. I think. For most oh, yeah. people like think monster that's, that's a design rule you gotta have something cute you just gotta no we did morsels that was yeah. the backup cute thing just in case imps didn't work out fledgling imp for gabrio yeah transcend imp yeah. for marimo okay. right right there's so know? many imp jokes that was the best like you could just add the word imp right and then i yeah i got to do all all the imp puns i've always just wanted to put in the game right yes, there yes okay so chief i think I'm actually yeah, that was, no, i was just gonna say renaming cards i think I think we have renamed a few of those. Ah, I should have the original up names? stream. Oh no, like the different like imp like associated cards and stuff, like impressive or just different things. Like I think implosion. We, implosion. <laughs> there was a lot of like cutting room floor imp related concepts. Yes. Chat says it's impossible <laughs> to not make some puns. They're they're starting up now. Okay, so this one was a long time ago. I mean, we're talking about family that we've seen, and two characters did make an appearance on our stream that probably most of us don't remember. Do you remember Aiden Cool and Beach Severati? 
uh, from your sever tie. Sever tie <laughs> from your children. Here, I'm gonna put. Yeah, it in so there. yeah, I have reason to remember that. Most other people don't. <laughs> Oh, there's some stuff behind me on the this wall for my kids. Uh, some of my kids' years. drawings. Here, what, or actually, one of these is my drawing that my kid got mad about, which made me laugh so much I decided to put it on the wall. I can show that off real quick. It's an important one. <laughs> yeah, this is the this is gonna be the real DLC. One of my kids asked me to. Yeah, we need to get Beach Sever time in the game. Right. He's so so I drew this guy. And then we joked that he had your hair on. All right. Yeah. He's got muscles. Uh, I have an He's update on Beach Sever tie, actually. Uh, one of my kids told me recently thumbs, right? that he eats my sand, got really mad. She said he drinks too, ocean too water, He's not and lives in a tree. Uh, but then I asked her so what his name was. Some updated information on Beach. Beach Sever Just in case you were curious. I'm keeping it on my wall here now. They're asking about Frank. And then, so I drew a second one that's on the back, actually. But I yeah, know, yeah, no, so I, I love this some of the kind of meme cool. names that the community came up with for, uh, for, for different for characters and so on. And I believe I that. personally published the mod to the Steam Workshop yes, to change uh, the Hornbreaker Prince's name to Frank um, with my amazing artistic skills in MS Paint for the icon. So, yeah, I love that type of stuff. What's the other one? The Best Friends? Best friends. Oh, what yeah, there was like two other creatures from the Hellhorn clan. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Vul Vulpixen uh, said they just 100 percent it 20 minutes before the stream. So that's great. We appreciate hey, it. Hey, congrats. Yay. <laughs> it's hard. There's a lot to do. Yes, thank I, you. I would admit, I don't think I'm 100%. 321 hours of I don't know if I got Bone Dog Gold. I don't, I don't think so. Whoever did that, it's terrible. <laughs> That's, that's some of the real drama. I'm talking about balance and tuning drama. Bone Dog yes. love beloved card. Beloved and hated. Love card. People right, except for the, the RNG to, to get that thing gold. A lot of rage in the early days about the rarity of Bone Dog. Probably now still. We just... Probably now still. We did make it more common. We did make drop, though. That's true. Uh, you know, it was funny Compromise. because I'm trying to think of the Twitter account for Can You Hit the Dog? That was like a thing. You know, Bone Dog was pettable in the in the text. So it was like, Can You Pet right. the Dog? Was, was right. sharing that for Bone Dog, which I thought was, was hilariously awesome. Yes. Yep. Okay, so we're, we're going to wrap up here. We have like another five minutes left. So if you guys would like to ask any questions of Mark and Andrew before we jump over to Jordan and Eugene and talk about something completely different, um, please do ask your questions or share your memories, and we will talk about them for a year. Oh, Skotar, been playing for about a year now. No, still haven't 100%ed it. That's okay. You got this. You got this. We believe in you. And about you guys, do you have anything you want to kind of say while you while your last few minutes tick down? It's, it's good to be here. Good to hang out with people. You know, it's we look forward to doing it again at some point. Yes. I know everyone's wants sure. updates. They want like, hey, are you gonna make more of the game? I know. It's it's good to know that you guys are still hungry for more monster train we're content. We you know, we're still here. We got we got it up on the wall. You can't you can't take things off the wall once it's on the wall, you know. That's permanent. <laughs> so so it's still around. We're in our new office making making stuff. So. Yeah. Well, we're not gonna announce anything about that today, but uh, you know, hopefully we can sometime in the future. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Do you guys want to pop off? Thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, we'll, we will have more streams. This is not our last of streams. Uh, Andrew has other things to do on unnamed projects at the moment. No, it is not Monster Train 2 at this moment. But yes, we're going to let you guys pop uh -huh. off. And uh, we're going to be joined by Jordan and Eugene in just a second. So let me go to the standby. Um, we'll okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank See you later. You. Good to be here. See you next time. Okay, hang on community. We're gonna, we're gonna rejoin our call. And wait for Jordan and Eugene to come in here because we have lots of questions for sound and for, for art stuff. Welcome. Welcome, okay. Wait for Jordan. There they are. Okay, so let's go 
everyone. Welcome, Eugen, art manager, and hopefully Jordan. Jordan, do you have your camera on? I feel like you're here somewhere. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not on the call yet. can see him. Uh, for me? Yeah, there you are. Okay. And oh, Jordan, okay. Jordan, composer. Everyone's here. Awesome. Okay, well, hopefully um, you guys are enjoying the stream so far. We are really pleased to welcome uh, some of our guests that I think you've seen on streams before. And uh, a lot of credit to them for for our art and our music, and we're gonna kind of delve into that. So, Eugen, uh, I think we're gonna, we're gonna talk to you in a second. We're gonna start with Jordan. Would you mind sharing more about your role in the history of the game? For those who have not watched the streams before, tell them about yourself, Jordan. Sure, yeah. Um, I did the uh, the music and the sound for Monster Train and basically all things audio. Uh, worked with our talented voiceover artists, uh, with the designers, and kind of got all that stuff integrated into the design of the game. Okay, and for those of you who have not met Eugen, we're linking a previous stream in the chat. But Eugen, would you tell people who is the man behind the art? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm Eugen, the general the art manager, art manager for Shiny Shoe. Um, just kind of wrangle art, kind of a free safety, pick up whatever tasks on Monster Train. Uh, did a lot of processing of art, and just a lot of artists, and you know, implemented things here and there, made a few assets, just kind of whatever popped up, I would just sort of jump on it. Yes, and also a thousand times being bugged in Slack by me going, hey, do you have this asset? Hey, may I have this thing? <laughs> yes, yes. Slack God to us all. Okay, so obviously this is a, a lovely circle train where people have art. You know, they need, they need voices for this art. They need sound for this art. It all works together in a wonderful tapestry. But Jordan, we're going to talk about voices now. Uh, we had a wonderful stream before with voice actors, and we're going to share that in a second. But... Uh, some of our favorite clips and snippets with uh, D.B. Cooper and Michael Schwalbe. I forget, I can never pronounce his name correctly. But can you tell us, yeah, like, well, right. before we watch that, about the process of selecting, like, the right voice actors and how you picked these crazy talented folks? Yeah, that's, uh, that's <laughs> it's always kind of a, a fun one to answer because the entire uh, game is voiced by those two. So D.B. Cooper and Michael Schwalbe. And I don't know if we necessarily planned for it to be that way. They were just that um, talented and that, that diverse, right? Because there are a lot of monsters in the game. Um, it was not <laughs> it was not something that we were expecting them to do. Um, so they, they kind of came in and brought their own spin on things. And we realized that we could take it a lot further than we did. So, um, you know, after just hearing their audition tapes and, and some of their other work, you know, we kind of knew that they were capable of doing what we wanted. And then when we actually got into a call with them and started working on things that kind of solidified all that for us. Awesome. We're going to watch a little bit of a snippet from one of our previous live streams. I also love your face while they're making all these sounds. It's so good. We're going to, we're going to look at this and, uh, and enjoy. Some characters require you to actually move the If you want to watch along, face. we can. So if you've got something that sounds a little different, you're going to be going like this. And what does it sound like? <laughs> so, I did all the gorgers, like, <laughs> like pulling my awesome. cheek out of his eyes. Yeah. So yeah, it gets t it gets a little tiring. But I mean, it's like it's like doing it's like doing Slimer in Ghostbusters, you know. <laughs> so some characters were really cool. trying to get it to sound to sound um, like an insect, you know, having insects in mind, that kind of thing, or, or insectile and otherworldly things, a lot of the, I was thinking that I was going to blow my voice out because I was going to have to do ah! out, but the, <laughs> instead with the inhale or just bringing air in was so much weirder. I'm convinced that it's, there you go. Yeah, that's that's that that's the DB technique. <laughs> so there we go. We have them at the beginning, of course, for a Monster Train like original, and all the way through Last Divinity. So 
at, when you're writing at that point, after you've started like already having Monster Train and now you're all the way into, you know, DLC, these are their free updates. Are you thinking about them when you, when you're when you're like writing music or you're thinking about sounds? Does it become about them or do you kind of just like is it about the art? How do you how does your process work for this? Um yeah, once so for the DLC um both the uh you know what the the Talos and the Arcus update and then the Last Divinity uh, I definitely was thinking of them. We wanted to figure out a way to, to uh, work with them again, but we were also <laughs> starting to get increasingly concerned about how samey it would sound. So we we really challenged them to uh, kind of reinvent um, the, some of the things that they brought to the table, and, and they did. Um, and one of the coolest things for me, at least, was you know we had these two people who were doing uh, stuff that they were comfortable doing for the base game. And with the um, the last divinity, we kind of actually challenged them to role reverse a little bit. So we had DB, who did all the the morsels and the imps and all the, the cute noises and and the ones that uh, we we've, we've grown to love from her. We had we gave her the big creatures and the the beefy ones, and we had uh, Michael do more of like the um, there's the, this one imp who's just kind of like a brat, and I'm forgetting the name right now, but he kind of like. Did his whole angsty teenager thing, uh, and then for the um, the last divinity itself, that's actually a mix of both of their voices with a lot of processing and, and stuff like that. So I thought that was a really beautiful way to to kind of wrap it up. Interesting. Okay, so Eugen, we we talked a little bit before about cards and how the Bone Dog was very popular. Um, and while we look at some art here, can you tell us more about? Uh, Shawnee Shoe's game Death Store Bone Dog, and does this have a relationship to the Bone Dog eventually that we're seeing here? Uh, yeah, sure. The, the Bone Dog was was um, you know, a beloved character in Death Store. People, the fans, seem to really enjoy that character. And then I think so. You know, we brought it into uh, Monster Train. It was just we always liked to. The artists always like to hide Easter eggs and put things in, in backgrounds or just subtle things for fun. And I think we wanted to put something from Dead Store and just just to, you know, just for fun. And I recall, uh, I think it was Brendan or Andrew, they had, we talked about bringing something in and then there was a, an opportunity for, a, a, it was an event and it was really kind of rare. So um, I just asked Lloyd to revive the Bone Dog, but in the style of Monster Train. Um, and, but we kept a secret from even the team and, and it just, uh, so that it would just pop up and people would be, hopefully be excited to see it. So, yeah, Lloyd did the art. Um, he had a good time with it. He loves putting a bunch of Easter eggs in there too. So, uh, he redesigned it to fit the Monster Train universe and, and that's how it got in. How did they react when they saw it? Uh, yeah, people were pretty, pretty, I mean, the team, I think, um, on Slack started popping up like, is that the bone dog? They were pretty excited. And I think, I think the community was pretty excited, but it, I think it was a pretty rare card too. So it mm -hmm. kind of, I mm -hmm. think it, I think you meant talk about it a bit earlier. It caused a little bit of rage here and there. But, yeah. Um, For those who don't know, can you tell them about Death Store? Uh, you know, such a long time ago, it was a, it was sort of a, brainchild of uh, our design team, Andrew, and um, it was it was um, kind of like a Twitch plays. It, it, it was, uh, I forget the name, but, um, but basically it was a, a sort of an, an RPG universe where, but the, the decisions in the game was, were driven by uh, chat, basically. And we did two versions, Death Store, um, one and two, and we really loved doing it. It was, it was um, a lot of fun, really experimental, very unusual. Um, but um, um, yeah, ultimately, ultimately, we couldn't couldn't quite sustain it. So it was such kind of very niche, I guess. You know, so. Well, I'm glad. That but we learned a lot. Fun. We we learned a lot from it, definitely, and it was really a lot of fun. fun to make. Awesome. Now, Jordan, I understand that there's some sounds for the bone dog or like how was this inspired 
<laughs> and I'm going to show this on loop because it's just too adorable. Tell us, tell us about this. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, that's my dog, Henley. Um, you know, when, when we brought bone dog back, I was really thrilled because, um, you know, I really liked bone dog from, from death store and a lot of people did too. And, um, just to be able to, to finally give him a, a sound effect. I was like, oh, well, it would be neat if, if it could be Henley. So, um, yeah, we, um, found that clip when he was still a puppy and, um, yeah, he's no longer a puppy, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, uh, just kind of worked with that, that sample to, uh, you know, cause I, I was deep into all the VO stuff, the voice, uh, voice acting stuff already. So, um, just ran him through a similar treatment to some of the other monsters, not too much, but, um, yeah, that's, uh. That's uh that's in. Henley's actually here right now. He's kind of conked out. Oh, uh, well, if he wakes up, we will cameo him for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, Eugene. Um, let's see. Uh, there's there's been a lot of inspiration that people have guessed at for some of the characters that are in here, um, but I believe that you have admitted a couple of them. So we're gonna look at. Uh, here we go. Hang on. We're gonna look at these two. Um, hang on, Henley. You have to, you have to hide for a minute. Um, we're gonna look at this one, uh, Penumbra. And there's people that have said like, okay, this seems like it might be from something that I have seen before. Can you talk about like some of the creations that might have inspired you to do this? Um, yeah, that was um, definitely driven by the design team and absolutely Spirited Away and Miyazaki were um, inspirations for us. And the, the morsels are, are a tip of the hat for sure to uh, Spirited Away characters. Um, yeah, Penumbra, I don't recall if that was a, I think that was definitely <laughs> a reference, one of the references we that the designers, uh, Brendan, uh, had um, Put in the design doc uh, for the artists that uh, in primordium yeah. um gosh primordium yeah probably uh, like i said it's fair to away what, yeah it was yeah. it was definitely it was definitely one of you know we do it, when the design docs pop up uh, um, it has all the information for backstory and gameplay and animation and then um, then we do a little small image boards of uh, art reference art that, that the designers um, are sort of drawing from and what they they kind of think they want to see in the character and they put put these image boards together and then we send it uh, send it off to the artists and, and i'm pretty sure that that was definitely one of the spirit away was referenced quite a bit <laughs> people love primordium because they say he's three mortals in a trench coat that's, that's yeah what they <laughs> yeah that's what they believe uh, <laughs> they're, they're yeah, that is that is that. If I recall correctly, that was the design. It was it's just like a bunch of morsels stacked <laughs> up on top of each other, masquerading as a larger character. His movement's actually rather terrifying. Like when he flies open, you know, he, he's kind of cute, and then suddenly terrifying. Yeah. That's really yeah. They, they, we always tried to strike that balance. Um, it was very intentional. The designers wanted, um, you know, it's it's. It's it's a hellish world, but they always wanted accessibility and and the character and um, things not to get too dark or spooky. You know? So we tried to keep it lighthearted. Okay, we've been fortunate to have a whole live stream um, with Jordan listening to some of the stuff um, of the music of the game. So if you'd like to see that, there might be a link. I have to see if I can find it for that. Um, we don't have as much music to listen to this, but our our community does have some questions about things uh, like voice acting, but they also have questions about how to pronounce certain things. And I know that uh, Andrew was basically saying naming is one of the hardest things that, that they have to do. Uh, we met a new champion that I call Wildenton, but even like our team, both of our teams had some questions about like how to pronounce this. So we're gonna, we're gonna watch a little video and then we'll talk about this process if this, if this touches on you, so here. How do you say the styled champion's name? Widenton. Widenton. Yeah, Widenton. Widenton. Yeah, Widenton. <laughs> Here's how that's really pronounced. Will Denton. Uh, Redbeard apparently says it is Wildenton, but I don't care. It's Wildenton to me, so I'm going with that. Sorry. <laughs> 
How do you say the awoken? Okay, so Mark Mark also has like stuck on his own way. But how does this process work for how does something sound, a name or anything else? Yeah, it just get I, I, I always call it wild and tin too. It's completely <laughs> um it, it, there's a lot of things in and mispronounce and um you know Brendan or Andrew have to uh, they correct us, but then once you say it, it kind of sticks, right? So there's a lot of typos too. If you look through our source art, there's all kinds of, um, or read the design doc and mispronounce something, or think I see it another way, and then I'll, I'll name it, name start naming the asset something. And, uh, you have to write it yeah, it's then. always like a, like you know, leafy, punchy guy the names or something like that. So much, so so frequently. So yeah, sometimes I don't even know what someone referring to it. So can you show me the image? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I always remember Brendan told me it was like Will Wheaton. So Will Denton. Will that's, Denton. That's, I remember Denton. <laughs> that's a good that's a good way to remember it actually. Will Denton. Okay. All right. So other than sounds like that, uh, we're gonna go back to yours and tell us how you shaped the idea of what a train from hell should sound like. So how the bone shaker itself, how do how do you come up with the sound for the bone shaker? Um, so the, the bone shaker sounds themselves, like when your pyre gets hit and stuff that, that actually went through a lot of iteration. Um, uh, Andrew actually had a lot of good thoughts early on about, he wanted it to sound, you know, it, it is a train, like it's a, it's a machine, but also he wanted it to sound kind of, uh, alive and, and animalistic. I think there were some, some early Zelda references thrown around, um, I think, uh, what we ended up on was um this idea that it is it's not exactly living but it does have a kind of a moan to it you know so when you when you smack the pyre it's like it has a you know flame sounds and kind of like uh the sound of metal being stressed but it's also got kind of a like a groan to it um everything beyond that i think is pretty literal you know train whistles and train track things and steam a lot of steam uh influence stuff valves and mechanisms and things and um a, a lot of those things found their way into the music too so using a lot of steam valves and just like wrench sounds as uh, percussion in the music people really respond well to the soundtrack like how how is that for you to know i mean there's always some, something positive to say about it it's one of like the features of monster chain um, are you are you reading these things and do you kind of follow that? Do you get to hear what people say about it? Yeah, I like hearing what people say um, about, you know, they pick up certain things that uh, different things about the soundtrack. And um, uh, I always appreciate that. So so thank you if you uh, left comments about it. The, the music is is definitely uh, very near and dear to me because it's kind of a mix of stuff that I I already liked writing, you know, there's a lot of uh, metal influences, a lot of sort of steampunk and orchestral things in there that just happened to be uh, a blend that that worked uh, for the game. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. One of my favorite moments when we talk about music or or things, you know, we have we have some fun behind the scenes stuff, and I'm absolutely going to talk to you about what is happening <laughs> in the team with some of this stuff. One of my favorites is the Bohemian Rhapsody with Baby Imp. Um, occasionally we'll just have these Slack chats and that was so nice. Jordan's like, Hey, you want to, here's the thing, which was amazing. So we're going to have like, we're going to have a little, a little look at the Bohemian Rhapsody. And so it's just called Mama. <laughs> so that... That was that was truly uh, magical. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thanks for adding the visuals. <laughs> you made it <laughs> made it ten times better. Um, yeah, that was actually like we laugh it off now, but if you spend two or three hours listening to Mama samples, um, it gets a little. It was getting a little grating, so that was just uh, <laughs> that was me just trying to do uh, to break the tension a little bit, um, but. Uh, yeah, now it's a now it's a thing. So. Now it's a thing. It is definitely a thing. Okay, so Eugene, we saw some early art at the beginning of this stream here. 
Um, what do you think was the biggest evolution in style, like from concept to where it ended up for you? I'm sure I wish I had a picture, but we're just going to ask the question. Um, yeah, I guess it's, um, it's hard to pinpoint a single thing because, um, the way we tend to work in general, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of feedback from the team. It's kind of a bottom up uh, process. We just, um, started with some early stuff and, um, and people, if they respond to it, we sort of kind of keep going down that path. But I think in a way also, we just kind of key in on like a, one of the artist styles, uh, personal style. And I think that usually is a, is a good way to go. The team, the team just responds to it. They like it. Um, and, and I think in this case, it was you know, Will and Loy, they were driving a lot of the, a lot of the visuals, um, and, you know, they would look at design docs to work with the designers, talk to Brendan and Andrew, and then they would do some sketches and, um, you know, Andrew would always have really good high level feedback in terms of like, well, he wants to keep it accessible and the character should be sort of inspiration or, um, um, I forget the word, but, um, character should be a certain way, environment should feel a certain way, um, and then will and Loy would just keep kind of riffing off of that and and then the style would sort of eventually evolve of course we'd look at a lot of um reference art and they would, we'd refer to other games saying this 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 particular style or asset is driving this idea and the designers agree with it. They, they want to push in that direction um so then it, it slowly evolves and then, and then eventually it kind of gels and solidifies and then we build a design doc around that uh, or a visual style guide around that how do you go about picking um, the artists that you're using? I mean, these two, well, very talented, I feel like are kind of, they have different styles. It's interesting how they end up meshing together into a final. Yeah, that, that takes um, a while. Um, you know, we used the, we had a lot of contractors on quite a, quite a few, a lot of talent come in and really we just, we, we go out and we look at their, their portfolio and, and see if their style is sort of uh, pushing it is in that, in, you know, in the same genre or if it's uh, kind of see like that's their strength and they match what uh, Will and, and Loy had sort of um, evolved this style into. And then and then we just reach out and contact them. And, um, so it's really just looking, once we sort of establish that style, or, uh, we just go around looking at people's portfolios and reaching out to people. One of the things that strikes me about Monster Train that I think is really exceptional is that, you know, there is a very defined brand guide. I mean, there's very clear, like, okay, the blue is always on the right and the red is always on the left. And this is how characters face each other. And here's where bad guys go. And, and here's, it's very, very clear and well thought out. How does that process work for you? And, you know, is that like pretty standard for you guys? Uh, yeah, it is. You know, we're all in service to design. It's about making a fun game. So, um, a lot of the visuals, I mean, there's a lot of technical aspects to the visuals or, or a lot of technical aspects that define the visuals, I guess is better to say, color coding, um, the shape languages, um, this type of thing and, and how they even animations. So it, it's really going back and forth with designers as the game evolves, the gameplay evolves. Uh, things become obvious, like, okay, that's not working. So we have to change the way the layout is or the composition or colors aren't working or people can't see certain things. So there's definitely a ton of uh, technical and design gameplay um, influences on, on, on the art visuals. E even down to the, the style itself, again, that was driven by um, you know, Andrew and Brendan wanting the game to feel a certain way, be accessible to a broad audience. Yeah. Okay, community, if you have questions, please do ask them. Um, we will add them in here at the end. We're getting kind of closer to the end of our time. But uh, let's talk about, let's see, some cool stuff that um, we had with the music and etc. So I know you had some people uh, do 
in addition to voices, but in the music, there was a little bit of singing there. Uh, and also, you know, of course, the instruments yourselves. So can you talk about like how you're putting together these different threads into a cohesive thing? Are you playing all of these, you know, digitally and then weaving them together? Or are you like <laughs> hiring a large orchestra to do this stuff? How does this process work for those of us who don't see the music side? Um, yeah, I'm definitely not hiring an orchestra. <laughs> is that a dream? Um, a lot of it, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of it is uh, uh, samples and, and uh, virtual orchestration, and uh, it, it's really come a long way. Um, I do try to get live uh, instrumentation where I can, just to, to add a little bit of humanness to it. So um, on the Lost of the Bogs, uh, we did have a, a violinist come in, my friend Patty, she did an amazing job with that. Um, and then the vocal track you're talking about, um, I think is uh, The Descent, which is our, our credits track. Mm -hmm. um, actually uh, worked with Eugen pretty closely on that one too, just to kind of get the timing of the credits and, and different, uh, you know, different uh, story beats and things that we wanted to hit there. Um, but the, the vocals on that uh, were done by Betsy Streeter, who's actually uh, Brendan's wife and she's, um, you know, I've known her for a while and she's very artistic, very musical. And we talked about doing something like that for a while. Um, the credits track just seemed like the perfect uh, opportunity to do that. Um, I also have a background as a singer songwriter. So it was kind of our, uh, our little collaboration on that, <laughs> on that front. Um, and a chance to, to talk more about the lore, right. Which is, um, not necessarily in your face, but extremely detailed. And um, I, I was just glad to see that fleshed out a little bit more. Surf Wizard is asking, are there any cool things you did in-house to make sound effects? Like, are you foleying it out? Um, that is a good question. So um, a lot of the sound effects actually um, are like an amalgamation of, of different things. So there's a lot of magic and there were a lot of things that I did with synthesizers, I think, for um, different effects. Like we had talked with uh, design or, you know, with Brendan and, and Andrew about like weaving in musical aspects to the sound effects and making sure that the, like when you win a run and you get you know, the little tones that play, it's like, bum, 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 bum. It's like making sure that was in the same key. Um, just stuff like that. Uh, as far as like in-house Foley, uh, I wasn't like uh, Disney Studios, like <laughs> squishing slime in my room in front of a microphone or, or anything like that. Um, occasionally, like if there were things that, that I needed. Um, but uh, yeah. Cool, cool. So what are some of your like behind the scenes? I guess I'm wondering, you know, you're making all this stuff, you're making this music, you're making this art, um, perhaps not as engaged with gameplay or as engaged with like launch, etc. Are you watching like the launches of this stuff? Are you, um, do you have like a favorite moment of things you've seen? Like once the game is kind of out there, out of your hands, either of you, both of you. I think um, one of, I guess, I'm not sure if this answer or goes to your question, but for me, for me, once we launched and the, seeing the response, we, we, we're never sure how how people are going to respond to the thing we make. Um, but having the positive response, and I, I couldn't stop watching streamers uh, for a long time. It was really distracting, and uh, following chats on Discord. It was, it, that, I think that's a really exciting and rewarding for the developers to see people having fun with really enjoying something you made. That was part of this exciting thing. Neat. Yeah, the streamers definitely for me too. Like uh, Northern Lion would play it or um, I also really liked um, SD's streams. Like he, he was doing, like he would just get so animated and his whole community would get animated with him. And that was it, like, whenever he broke the game, which was, was often, you know, like in a crazy combo or something like that. Uh, it's just, it's cool to see, um, I think like what Andrew had said earlier, like just people taking it further than, than we did. Like in theory, we should know everything there is about this game, <laughs> but, you know, letting the community and then the players 
figure out stuff that that we didn't know was possible is definitely um is definitely great and that's not even like a singular moment right it's like it's like it was a continuous thing so we want to make sure to thank our streamers northern lion rhapsody wanderbots and divide and conquer i spent a lot of time um just kind of like anytime we had like a special beat that was happening with the game if there was a new like expansion or a new like anything like the dlc etc uh, they would jump on and like stream for everybody and be on Steam with us, etc. So, you know, huge thanks to them. I mean, they they did that out of the love of their hearts for the game. So, just lovely to see like all the influencers and and especially those you know three uh, who just want to support and they just really like to play like those nine hundred hours we we're talking about. So, yeah, huge thanks to all of them. Also, Eugen. I mean, we we were talking about awards earlier. I mean, the Giga O nominee for 2d character design like that must feel nice oh yeah that was uh yeah i i think um it's definitely it's it was yeah i don't know say so it's been <laughs> definitely really exciting for us and and, and um, sort of a nod to all the talent the artists that we had um, and the designers too you know it's um it, it was really it was, it's always great to to be rewarded or awarded and again fan response people just people playing that's why we make it right that's what we do and people responding well to something we made is, is very rewarding shadow marks is asking what's jordan's favorite track theirs is lost to the bogs it's so good oh thank you yeah that that one was fun the that that's the one that had uh the patty on violin um so i i definitely have some love for that one. Uh, I think maybe the my favorite one to write was uh, Sojourn, which is the the menu or not the menu, but like kind of the overworld one. Um, I don't know why I just like sad stuff, and that's just like such a sad, <laughs> you know, it's a, a march <laughs> through hell, and it's just like the, um, it's it's also just sort of a, a far cry from the rest of, you know, the game is basically just like battle track after battle track boss battle track you know and so it, it's nice to have a little respite i think just uh ear fatigue and, and all of that and um yeah i just i really enjoyed writing that one okay i think we're wrapping up our time um there's a lot of stuff we did not get to mention or go over um honestly we could just do moments for forever um but i just want to thank the community for being just amazing and supporting the game for these last two years and, and hopefully many more years and also, you know, huge thanks to you, Jordan and Eugene, who I've drug on streams throughout the last two years and now done so once again. Um, appreciate you joining us. Oh, happy to be yeah. here. And, and yeah, yeah, thanks to those fans. Cool. Okay, so guys, we're going to do a raid in a second here and just hop over to another person who is playing Monster Train. So if you'd like to continue this fun time, stay here.